Hi, and welcome everyone. In this uh, video, I want to go over orthogonal complements. So first, we're going to go over the definition of orthogonal complements, see what they are, and then we'll uh, see how we can find it. So let's go over the definition. If W is a subspace in Rn, then W perp, and perp, you know, it's orthogonal, and this is the symbol for uh, perpendicular. The orthogonal complement of W is defined as W perp is again a vector in Rn such that W V dot W equals to zero. And we know that two vectors are perpendicular orthogonal if the dot product equals to zero. And that's for all W in W. And note that W perp is also a subspace of Rn. Another way, this is the, the, we go over the theorem. If W is the span of W1, W2 up to WK in Rn, then W perp, if we say it's a vector in Rn such that V dot Wi equals to zero. So if you take V and take the dot product with every single vector in W, then you have, you are going to get zero. And that says for all I equals to one, two up to K. Let's see an example. Let's say we have S and we have two vectors in S and this is in R4. So, and we can say W is the span of S. We already know what span is. So find the basis for W per. What we're looking for, if we go all vectors, such that uh, if we have these X1, X2, X3, X4, and it has to be in R4 also, and we take v dot w i, we should get zero. How we can set that up? So if we take the first vector w one here dot v, we should get it. We should get zero, and also the second vector w two, and if we do the dot product for yeah with v, we also should get zero. And guess what? If I write the dot product for the first one is that the first component of this vector times that. So it's just x1 plus 3x2 minus 3x4 plus 5x4, 3x3 plus 5x4 equals to zero. And the same thing here. And if you write this, as again, that becomes just a homogeneous system. And basically, you solve this the same way you solve the homogeneous system, and that's going to give you a basis for the W perp. And I wrote that here. So if we set up the system, the augmented matrix is that. You can find the RREF, and uh, this is the RREF of that matrix. And you can put the zeros here. Now we know we have two, three variables, X3 and X4. So we can call X3 as S and X4 as T. We write the system, so x1 minus 31 x3 plus 49 x4 is 0, and x2 plus 3 over 11, and this was 31 over 11. 3 over 11 x3 plus 2 over 11 x4, basically that's what I'm writing, equals to 0. You can isolate x1, and you can isolate x2 here. And if you write x1, x2, x3 equals to x1, x2, s, and t, since we call them just to how we solve a homogeneous system, then you can substitute x1 by that expression and x2 by that expression. And we know that x3 is s and x4 is t, so you can substitute those, separate the x's and the t's. So you get 31 at over 11 s minus 3 over 11 s, s and 0. So first we go with s's and that doesn't have an s. And with t's, we have negative 49 over 11 t, negative 2 over 11 t, 0 and t. Now, if you don't want to get fractions, you can just uh, factor out s over 11, so you get 31, negative 3, 11, and 0, and here you get negative 49, 0, negative 2, 0, and 11. So w perp is going to be the span of these two vectors. Span them is any linear combination of these two vectors is 
is going to be the perpendicular orthogonal to the vectors in W. So every vector in W, which is the span of S, is orthogonal to every vector in W perp. Now, there's a note here for you. W perp was found by finding the null space of A. Excuse me again. When you solve the homogeneous equation, you find for the homogeneous system, we know that you find a basis uh, for the null space. So that's what basically did. The dimension of W, we had two vectors in W. And if I go back here, so, and we had two vectors in W perp. So if you add, then you get N, which is four. So in this case, now let's talk about that product and matrix multiplication. So I'll get some more conclusions about the orthogonal complements. When we have, we know when we have a system, we write AX equals to B. And of course, so if we just take that part, we can say uh, A11, A12 up to A1N. And again, this is an M by N matrix times X. And these are the components of X. Let's see how this works. So we know this is our row one, and I put it, that's row two and so on. And we have RM here. So basically if I do the matrix multiplication, which we're gonna see that in detail in the next lectures, but it's pretty easy. So you take that times that plus that times that and plus uh, again, dot, 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 dot times that. So this is basically what we have. And what is that? This is just R1 dot X. So, and so on. For the second row, if you write that, you get R2 times X. And again, the last one is gonna be RM dot X. So that's how it's written. You can factor out X1 and that's what you have A11, A12 up to A and one X two, and that's what you have. And the last one X and that's what you have. So you just thought I did is factor out X one, X two and X n. Let's see what happens. So basically we can say here, if we multiply, we have A one one, times x1 plus a12 times x2 plus dot 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 a1n times xn and that's r dot x. In this case, it's just x r1 actually we can put here. r1 dot x. And what is r1? r1 is the first row of a. And the same applies for every other rows. So in a. Now, if I take this matrix and just use the rows, I can say this is, and we write that again, this is R1, R2, and so on. So what happens What A times X is R1, R2, up to Rn times X. This is just matrix multiplication. And when we get the answer, the answer is R1 dot X R2 dot X and RM dot X. Why did we do that? Let's see this theorem. If X is a vector in RM is a solution of AX equals to zero M of, uh, the homo of the homogeneous system, then X dot RI equals to zero. So that means X is the null space of A if and only if X is orthogonal to the row space of A. So what we did basically, we pick X and then multiply that by the row space, by the rows of uh, the matrix and what we need to get, we should get zero. So the meaning of that is X is the null space of A because that's what we saw the homogeneous system. 
And that's always orthogonal to all the rows of A. If that's what we're going to get. We are solving the homogeneous system. Now, if W is the row space of A, then W perp is the null space of A. So, and vice versa. So just remember the row space, a basis in the row space is always perpendicular orthogonal to the basis to a basis in the null space. Now there's some properties, or you can say the row space and the null space are orthogonal complements. So that's how you can say that the properties of orthogonal complements. So W intersecting with W perp is going to give you the zero vector. W perp and perp is just W. The dimension of W plus the dimension of W perp is N. So now let's look at this example, finding W perp. Let's say you have, again, a vector, a set of vectors. This is in uh, R5 and you have four vectors. You wanna find the W perp of W. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, what we, you can do is write all those vectors as the rows of the matrix. And I put it here. This is V1, V2, V3, and V4. Find the RREF of that matrix. And that's what you get. And we know that W is going to be the span of the ones with the leading ones. So we're the non-zero vectors in RREF. So this is basically a basis for the row space, these two vectors. Now, if you want to find W perp, what we need to do is to find the null space of that. And then finding the null space, again, we know we have three, three variables here, or you can just uh, call them uh, R, S, and T and set it up and find it. But there is a shortcut, which I want to go over in this video, how you can find the basis for the null space by using a shortcut. So let me go over, and that's called the site reading, site reading the null space when you have AX equals to zero, or finding a basis for the null space by inspection. Now, what it says to do, I put the steps for you and I'm going to go over them one by one. Identify the leading ones in the RREF. And that's what I mean, I circled them in red. So this is the leading one. Step number two, identify the free variables. The free variables, you know, these are non-pivot columns. So X3, X4, and X5 are the free variables. And I think by now, you know, what they are. So these are the non-pivot columns. Then step number three, number of vectors in the basis is the number of the free variables. So the null space will have three vectors and then we're gonna see how we can find that. So the next what the best thing you can do is write those vectors. So you know you're gonna have, you're gonna have three vectors and you know you have five components for each. So and just do these lines. So put the put them on top of each other. Then place one on the entry corresponding to the free variables. So here are the free variables that if you put <clears throat> we know that x3 is a very free variable, x4 is a free variable, and x5 is a free variable. So you can put one, one, and one. So next step, put zeros on the coordinates, put zeros above and below those ones. So if you go here, here I put one, so you put zeros, here I put one, so you put zeros, and I put one, you put zero and zero. Then Next, the entries in the non-pivot columns appear 
in the first case is vector for the null space but with an opposite sign so basically you're going to go to that column so to this column for the first one so what we did we put our zeros to the right also and we put the one is here the bottom and the top we put this just has only bottom zeros and after that you have four and three so you put negative four negative three for the second one we had our one we put zeros on top and bottom then you put a zero then what you have and be careful here you have a negative three and a negative seven you can start from here put your three put your seven and there's no number here so you can just put zero and uh, finally this column we have our one and we put four six and you put you put the zeros there. So the span of the W perp is the span of these three vectors. And you write that. Let's check the dimension. The dimension of W perp is three because you have three vectors. And the dimension of W is two. And if you add them, you get five. And you know that each vector has five components. So. I think that's it for this lecture. Please uh, watch it a couple of times, then you can start finding some uh, orthogonal complements on your own. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Have a good one.